What's up everybody? Thank you for clicking and checking out the situation Sony has got themselves into. Now one sec, I can already hear fanboy sharpening the pitchforks, but hear me out. You honestly have to admit that it is really interesting to see just how the beginning of this generation is unfolding. Since the launch of the PS5, the crowd has only been really talking about two titles, and that is Spider-Man Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Yes, they've released other titles, but if you watch social media, these are the two that they're actively talking about on a regular basis. But also in recent events, we have seen Sony tarnish that marketing crown that they are so well known for with a few publicized blunders. Now, before any person with a difference in opinion gets up in arms and goes after me, please believe I am not saying Sony has had major missteps, but they haven't exactly had that tactical poise that they're known for. Instead, since the departure of Sean Layden, we have seen Jim Ryan make actually really big changes to the PlayStation brand and the way they do business. Jim Ryan himself is even guilty of kind of stumbling slash dancing around with words and his consumer's feelings. So at this point, in my opinion, some cracks are starting to show due to Sony forgetting to keep their eye on the ball and worrying about what goes on in their own house. Jocko Willink, host of Jocko Podcast, said it best. Success and failure are generally slow processes. You are either slowly building yourself up or gradually tearing yourself down. With every second, you are either building or decaying. This is a very good quote that can be said to the heart and strategy that Phil Spencer brought to the Xbox brand. He has stated in the past that he felt uncomfortable back in 2013 when he stood there and watched as people with no love or passion for the Xbox brand tried to change it into a DRM VCR. He became uncomfortable because he had passion for the Xbox brand and that passion allowed him to take the wheel and become the biggest force that the brand has ever seen. He could have honestly tucked tail and said screw it, but he didn't. He instead buckled down and got on the grind. Meanwhile, over at Sony, all caught up in the moment, they kind of forgot a few things. They were of course a little busy telling us jokes with how to hand someone a game, how 1080p makes you a better gamer, and writing the idea that Xbox had no real exclusive games. This idea, of course, was well-founded due to major studio closures and game cancellations in the beginning of the Xbox One PS4 generation. This was all due to Xbox consolidating the brand and making it more financially responsible for its own existence. During this time of restructuring, Xbox went pretty silent. Meanwhile, Sony only really bought third-party DLC to bolster the PS4's exclusive offerings. One of the biggest of those DLCs that they purchased was a raid in both Destiny 1 and 2. But the majority of them were just small little DLCs, like a hat in Red Dead Redemption and other cosmetic items throughout different games. On top of that, Sony also put a lot of time and effort to shame Xbox. Anytime Xbox showed its face, Sony was right there to put their face back in the mud and feel their presence. It is said during this time that Sony took the business stance that they were going to somehow crush the Xbox brand into submission. In business and in life, there is this saying, sometimes you have to take three steps back to take five steps forward, and this is the perfect way to describe the approach Phil Spencer took to the Xbox brand. He started with the design of the consoles and their lack of power and innovation, giving us the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X, and giving birth to a concept called Game Pass. With these swift and silent actions, he stabilized a brand that had lost its North Star and locked the brand on course to have a second win. All the while growing his executive team, getting the higher ups to invest in more studios, reaching out all around the world to bring more developers into the brand, and worrying more about Xbox's interactions with the gaming community than what Sony had going on over in their house. Phil Spencer has been called Kumbaya Phil Spencer for a while because of his approach to dealing with competitors. 
He has been quoted in saying, why should the brand's success be based on someone else's lack of it? There is enough room in the market for us all to be successful. He has stated though that one brand does have to be the best, and this drive to be the best is what competition is all about. There is a massive fundamental difference in ideas when you compare the idea of being the best versus the idea of being better than the other guy. Being better than the other guy leads only to short-term victories and no real growth in business and life. Being the best means that you will do the work needed to keep it that way. Phil really breaks the mold by allowing developers to make the games they have passion for. This has led to titles like Sea of Thieves, Grounded, and State of Decay. We have gotten continuation slash evolution of series like Years of War with The Coalition, Halo with 343, and Forza with Turn 10 and Playground Games. Each of these studios pushed the next evolution of the series they worked on, all while taking in the criticism they received from the fans. Phil's passion for gaming and his developers has led to future titles like Avowed, Hellblade 2, State of Decay 3, and The Return of Fable. Meanwhile, during the PS4 forgetful era, they partied and played and the fans got cookie cutter rehatches from beloved series. It's like Sony has figured if they stick to popular game mechanics in all of their games, they would have an edge. This lack of freedom of development led to games from beloved series like Uncharted 4, God of War 2018, and Last of Us 2 to have all similar repetitive mechanics. Even the new IP Sony created like Spider-Man, Days Gone, and Horizon Zero Dawn have these same repetitive mechanics. Sony has somehow settled into becoming the McDonald's of gaming. They have treated gaming like a burger that can be made over and over again by changing the toppings a little, but in the end, it's still a burger. A meat patty of varying quality between two buns. In my opinion, there is no organic innovation over at Sony. It's all about a perceived value. Sony has created and crafted this perceived notion that they are the best when they were only really aiming to be better than the other guy, not the best. This perceived false value got the world to buy over 100 million PS4s and led Sony to believe they have reached the mountaintop. So at that point, they broke out the champagne bottles and settled into their throne to crouch down to next gen. Their words, not mine. So while Sony crouched down on their throne in the bushes, Phil Spencer got ready to take his five steps forward. While Xbox was in saving money mode, they decided to stop and buy a few studios along the way. PlayStation, on the other hand, bought and spent as much money as they could to get as much third-party DLC as they could find. Phil Spencer created friendships with developers and publishers all around the world, meanwhile PlayStation was busy gatekeeping smaller developers off their platform. Phil Spencer wants to respect past, future, and present purchases with concepts like backwards compatibility and game preservation. Sony would rather find ways to keep getting more money from us by putting everything they can behind some form of paywall and talking about shutting down digital storefronts like the PS3 cutting off hundreds of consumers from their purchases. Xbox wanted customers to feel comfortable by investing in digital game purchases by changing its return policy. Meanwhile, Sony has some of the most anti-consumer policies I've seen come out of any company. Once your money is in the Sony ecosystem, you have no protections afforded to you even if it was done fraudulently. Sony bullies customers every single day to pay for fraudulent purchases made on their own accounts out of fear of Sony stripping them from their actual account. So while Sony stood and partied with all their customers' money, Phil Spencer was building in diligent silence. With multiple studio purchases from all around the world, innovation like xCloud to bring Xbox to new regions, and of course Game Pass, Phil Spencer established himself as what is called a Game Changer. The Game Changer is an individual who is so ruthless, tactical, and passionate that they don't even look back at their own competition. 
While Sony talked behind his back, he didn't even see them. They were behind him. While Sony forgot that they should keep marching forward, Phil Spencer turned his shoulds into a must. He must make his mark on the industry by completely changing the game. Game Pass has given developers and consumers alike access to a completely whole new world of gaming. Developers can get their games into the consumer's hands easier and the consumer doesn't have to continue going broke in what has become an expensive hobby. With Game Pass, we have seen Sony squirm a little uncomfortably. Sony has barely invested into their own home and now they have to stare at the unstoppable machine that Phil Spencer created. If anything can be said about Phil Spencer, he may not be perfect, no one ever is, but instead we have a respectful leader who at least makes me feel comfortable in the future direction of the brand. He has shown us how to honestly act in life, by showing how to hold poise when times are tough and the future is uncertain, by showing restraint to celebration cause he knows his work is never done. He has shown how to be passionate to what you believe in and to be inclusive and respectful to others. Individuals like Phil Spencer give the world an example on how to step into a place of diligence and into a mindset of humble, humility, and hungry. It is said by doing things other people refuse to do, you will have things other people don't. And that saying rings so much louder today because Phil Spencer, with all his grinding, building up the Xbox brand in respectful silence, was able to position Xbox into buying what others could not, and that is Bethesda. The newfound success and direction that Phil Spencer pumped into the Xbox brand came full circle when the executives at Microsoft flipped that $7.5 billion price tag for ZeniMax Bethesda. It wasn't a flex of corporate wealth. That purchase was earned through all the blood, sweat, tears, and true organic growth by working with developers like Bethesda. This growth has led to games like Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 now becoming exclusive to the Xbox brand. Phil Spencer has earned the respect and his true nature, a game changer that will not be stopped whether you like it or not. Sony forgot what it was like to be hungry. When they should have been building in silence, Sony partied loudly. When Xbox saved, Sony spent. When the fans spoke, Phil Spencer listened. Phil crafted more ways for us to save money and enjoy gaming, while Sony crafted ways for us to spend more money and lose it. Now all Sony can do is stand in reverent silence with no direction. No noteworthy stage shows, no word on exclusive first party games for the end of 2021, and no extended hard drive solution in sight for the PS5 yet. Sony got way too comfy in their throne and completely forgot that they need to compete. Yes, they bought Insomniac Studios, but can you really call that growth? The people there were already used to working for Sony and Sony already heavily relied on Insomniac Studios. Now they are stuck in their crouched silence on their throne of false perceived value waiting on the inevitable battle to come. The battle for the new throne of an industry that has completely changed. Sony forgot what it is to grind, but I know they will be back. They will build in silence to meet their competition head on for the massive battle for our money. But at this point, it seems PlayStation is going to silently hand Phil Spencer and Xbox 2021. As we're finishing this out, I just want to say, no, this is not me glorifying Phil Spencer. This is more like me glorifying the characteristics that he is presenting to us all for us to all kind of live by. I mean, you can't really deny the fact that he is a really awesome individual that has held a lot of respect in some stressful situations and has gotten a lot of flack from people and he has not really faltered at any time. It's really interesting that Xbox's slogan right now is power your dreams because Phil Spencer probably dreamed about making Xbox a very powerful brand and I think he has achieved in doing that. 
Well, guys, that does it all for today's content. Thank you for sticking it out to the end. I really appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to also keep your eyes out for my delightful other half on this channel. He goes by the name of Fanboy. Also, give me a follow over on Twitter. There you will find the location of various podcasts that I appear on throughout the week. So all my friends and fam of the neighborhood, thank you for tuning in, thank you for watching, thank you for being here, and till next time, be sure to stay safe and stay positive.